So everybody, we're here now for another Midweek Encouragement, and I'm absolutely delighted to say that I have the Reverend uh, Philip Simpkins with us uh, today uh, for a Midweek Encouragement. A number of you all know Philip, some of you uh, maybe won't, um, but Philip, it's great, great to have you here for a Midweek Encouragement. And um, Philip, um, as always, the first question that we ask on any good old Midweek Encouragement is, oh, Philip Simpkins, how do you take your tea <laughs> <laughs> i knew that question was coming i've watched this before really <laughs> um, <laughs> um, well i used to take uh, you know the traditional milk with two sugars um but uh when i had a proper job and was working we'd usually take to forget to take the sugar with us on our <laughs> jobs so i gave up sugar long ago and uh recently i gave up milk as well so i take it oh. black do you? Weak and black, oh, yes. Gosh, that's pretty so um, it's more to do with being uh, le using less dairy. So I take it weak and black. Oh, yeah. okay. Oh, that's pretty yeah. good. So that's quite unusual. We've had a few suggestions and a few ideas of most people say they don't like tea. These days, <laughs> but at least you still take it, even if you don't really have anything yeah. in it. Bottom yeah. Of a tea bag. Yeah. And, yeah. and a favourite mug or anything? Um, well, it so happens I've got one here. And um, it simply says, I've had it a long time, so it faded. It just says, more tea, Vicar. More tea, Vicar. <laughs> yeah, which is the story of my life. Got to be done, really, hasn't uh, it? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I've, got, yeah. I've, I've got one as well. All right, keep calm. I'm a Vicar. Yeah, well, yeah, I don't, know about, I don't know if anybody <laughs> ever does, but there we go. It's usually the opposite. But <laughs> Anyway, Philip, it's brilliant that you can do this uh, for us. Um, and as always, we, we usually like to start not by asking you what, what your, how you take your tea but also you know how is it that you came uh, to be in this part of the world how did you come to Alton you know what were you kind of doing before you came came here okay um well I've been a Methodist minister for uh, a good number of years and uh, from college in Bristol I was stationed to uh, Bude in Cornwall and then oh, we moved to Seaton down in Devon and then to the Isle of Wight and then to Canesham near Bristol um, and then to Alton. So we get stationed every five, five to 10 years, we get sent oh, somewhere gosh, different gosh, just gosh. to give everybody a break really. And, uh, <laughs> you know, a relief. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on what it is. yeah. So they all know I, we're going with sometime. <laughs> that's interesting. I didn't know you were down in Seaton. My auntie lives in Seaton. Right. Well, yeah, there so you go. That's another part, nice part. Of the world. I did know that, of course, so you were in um, uh, the, you were on the Isle of Wight. Yes. Because I think the church you were, uh, at, on the Isle of Wight was the church that my daughter Lorna also went to not when you were there but not long after you left now I think so that's right we yeah. looked after um, Newport Methodist Church and Gunville Methodist Church Gunville. yeah that was it Gunville. Is, and we we lived in Carisbrook just near to Carisbrook Castle which was great for the children growing up lovely part yeah. of the world and indeed I remember going to Gunville Church I've been there a couple of times in fact yeah yeah oh, gosh so so that's what you were doing oh, a little bit of a flavour one through as to what you were doing before you came here so in terms of being here in, in Alton I, I, forgive me because this is probably an obvious answer to this question but what sorts of things do you get up to in Alton? Well um, as you know um, so I, I'm the minister at the Methodist Church um, but I also have a, um, a number of churches that I'm assigned to look after yes so yes. that they include um, uh, Rowledge and Hale Methodist churches, which are small village chapels. And also I share ministry with Reverend Michael Hopkins in Farnham at the Spire URC Methodist Church. And also um, I'm covering the Methodist Church in Aldershot for a year because we were a minister down. Oh. So um, so I'm all over the place, really, um, just like my sermons. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. Uh, actually, and, and that's really helpful to know because I don't I think what people tend to do is they just think, well, there's Philip, he's in Alton. But actually, particularly as a Methodist minister, you know, conscious that you are, you, you, you're in all sorts of different places, really, aren't you? Looking after churches all over the place. So that's yeah. right. Yes. Yeah. 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 No, it, it's good. And uh, so involved in uh, obviously taking services and preaching and um, doing the rites of passage of marriage and baptism and so on. Um, Doing messy church in several other places yeah. and um, visiting when I can. And of course, as you will know, all the endless church council meetings <laughs> and uh, committee meetings to chair. Um, and so uh, life can be quite busy. Yeah. 
and also a, a strong association with the parish of the resurrection through um uh, through gap through the great that's Church. right so as methodists we're in a covenant relationship with the parish church which is brilliant and uh was uh on the job profile if you like when when i arrived which was uh, very exciting because i like working together with other churches of whatever denomination um in the town and uh, have always tried to do that where it's been practical so i think that really enriches our ministry together and we learn from each other so a absolutely couldn't agree more philip and uh, you know it is brilliant to see the way that churches work together across this town of Alton, not just through Gap, but in, in many other ways as well. Yeah. yeah. Oh. So, again, uh, another typical question that we'll have on Midweek Encouragement, and I think it's really important to ask you this one, again, bearing in mind what you do, is can you also just give a little bit of, give us a little bit of, a, of your own faith journey that's brought mm. you to, to where you are now, really? Yeah. So um, I was very, uh, very fortunate or blessed to be brought up in a Christian home. Um, both my parents were local preachers in the Methodist oh, wow. uh, circuit in the Chippenham area and um, they had a very strong faith and there are five of us as children and we were always taken along to chapel twice a Sunday oh. uh, morning and evening uh, but we never minded it was just part of life really and so I guess that faith um, grew from the seed of my parents upbringing. Um, my mother especially had um, uh, prayers and a bible reading with us before we went to bed and it was on one of those occasions when I was about seven or eight that um, I said mum I want to be a Christian can Aww. you make me help me pray a prayer of commitment <laughs> oh, and gosh. even though I look I look back at uh, a bible where I've written that down um, it's, it was very real to me then as a seven eight year old gosh. and uh, I really meant it and it gave me a great sense of assurance so that was my initial commitment wow. that I made myself and then I guess through my teenage years, um, I, I kept that faith. Um, it wasn't always easy when you were at school to be a Christian, um, as many people know. And then when I started uh, work, um, I began to question my faith. Was it uh, just, was I a Christian just because of my parents' upbringing and so on, because of the way I was influenced? And uh, I started reading more of the Bible to, to find out what it really said. I began to pray that if God uh was really there as i believed he was but if he was really there that he would somehow show himself to me and i began to thirst and long for more of god in my life uh, by the holy spirit and uh after quite a period of questioning and searching and uh through the influence of somebody i worked with as well that uh, had his faith had changed he said from being black and white to a color version <laughs> um, as he experienced god in his life um so I was sat in our little chapel uh, in Luckington, which is a tiny little place, and uh, there the preacher that came one Sunday evening um, brought a message where I trembled inside because I knew it was God answering my questions, and uh, and I wanted to speak to him afterwards, but I was too uh, shy to, so eventually I rung him up, and I went, and he, we prayed together, and um, there was a really a great sense of inner assurance, um, a great sense of peace, a great sense of having my own faith that was alive and real to me and that I wanted to share. Um, and so that's kind of the, 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 the core experience uh, that brought me to faith. Of course, down through life, you have all sorts of ups and downs and difficulties and challenges and questions. And I'm sure I know a lot less now than I did when I was 18. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, <don't think> so. <laughs> but I think God, God has been faithful and um, he's the rock on which I stand and, um, and that I seek to share. Brilliant. Gosh, thank you. That, that's, that's just so encouraging. I, I, I feel encouraged by that. So I, I, I'm sure many, many other people will be as they, as they listen to this recording. Um, thank you, Philip. Just very quickly, just because you mentioned the, um, talking with people at work that was obviously before you uh, became ordained a, a, as a Methodist minister w what was it that you used to do? Um, so when I was 16 I left school as soon as possible and uh, I got a job um, working for a, a garden contractor so we would go around um, laying lawns and planting shrubs oh, and wow. building patios and things like that and and um, there was a team of five or six of us and uh, there was a lot of banter going on um, but my my boss was was a Christian and it was his faith and the chats that we had raking down a lawn I can picture them now Gosh. where he was talking about his own experience and, and we used to have some really good conversations and those really encouraged me looking back um, in my late teenage years 
Um, so that really influenced me. Isn't it amazing how people can have a conversation with another person in all sorts of different works of uh, situations in life and the impact that it then has on us? Yes. Yeah, yeah, great example of that. Brilliant. Gosh. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Philip. Thank you. Um, just, just very quickly, just as we sort of begin to bring this to a close, because I guess we can't talk forever on it. It, it. I know you're incredibly busy and that you have all sorts of responsibilities with what you do, but do you actually get a time to do anything else in, <laughs> in the life of Philip Simpkins? Um, well, like you, I like my football. So in my head, I'm a brilliant goalkeeper. Um, <laughs> in reality, I'm not, but I love watching football on telly. Um, so I love sport, cricket and football and anything like that. Um, I enjoy gardening. I've got an allotment um, and I enjoy growing plants. And uh, of course, with a family as they've grown up, they always like their days out and trips yeah. to the seaside and things like that. Um, walks in the woods, which uh, I think Alton is just a fantastic place to go walk in. It so is, it? yeah. it's just a few other things that I enjoy doing um, oh, in those yeah. times off. Yeah. Gosh, I didn't know you were a goalkeeper. Crumbs. Well, <laughs> I so played did... in the college team. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. That does. That does. <laughs> and, sorry, I, I'm bound to ask this now because you've you mentioned it. That, what team do you support? Well, <laughs> I, I've always supported Chelsea since 1970 when they beat Leeds United in the FA Cup in a oh, replay. Oh, and that was, gosh. That was one of the first matches I'd ever watched on television. So as, as, as a young lad, um, that was very exciting. Yeah. And so they've always been my team. Um, but I do also semi-support Southampton and go and watch them sometimes. Oh, OK. Um, <clears throat> basically, because I can get a ticket to see um, some Premier League matches yeah, as excellent. well as enjoying oh, seeing them. Uh, well, in all the times I've been, I think I've only seen them win once or twice. But there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I do remember Chelsea versus Leeds in 1972, I think it was. Yeah, 1970 yeah. and 71. Two one in extra time. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Two all at Wembley. Two one in extra That's time. It. I was a bit of a Leeds fan then, actually. I remember crying afterwards. <laughs> so, oh, <good>. well. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much uh, for okay. just sharing a bit of your life and particularly uh, your your faith journey was is just great to hear. Um, thank you, and uh, we'll put this out on YouTube so that folk can see it. And I'm fine. I'm sure that people are going to find this hugely encouraging. Uh, and the final thing that we always do with Midweek Encouragement, can I just offer a, a short prayer for you? Yes, of course. Pray? Yeah, thank you. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you. Thank you for Philip. Thank you for all that he does uh, for you, for his faithfulness, for the way that he lives out his life, for his commitment to you. Uh, we lift before you, Lord, Philip and all of his family. We pray for Angela uh, and for Luke and for Dan, his two sons, uh, and we pray, Lord, that you continue to watch over them, that you continue uh, to bless them and keep them safe. Uh, and Lord, that you'd continue to do uh, mighty things uh, through uh, Philip and his ministry here in Alton and in the other places that he serves. Lord, thank you for him. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Gordon. Thank you. <laughs>